Today is 15 of March 2014. My name is Aubrey Cole from Ming Island Institute. Um, I'm going to interview you, Brian Wong. About, Hi, uh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> pleased to meet you. About the project British Chinese Web Force Heritage. Uh, may I start to ask, what's your name? Uh, my name is Brian Wong, Wong Wing Fu. And uh, when were you born? I was born in 1949 in China, uh, Kaiping City. The village is called Shengang. It's about half an hour drive from Kaiping Municipal City. Can you briefly um, describe your family background? Yes, uh, I had a, a wonderful uh, childhood in a way because you don't know what the outside world and what the society were. And our village was built by our grandfather who came back from San Francisco to build a village. And as such landowner, I think we were classed as uh, middle peasant, little peasants. In a way, that's like a wukao, like your registration from then on, you are be middle peasants. Since 1949, all the land will revert to the state, but we will allocate on the extended family a certain part of the land, which is enough for my mother and my brother to live on. My father was in America then. I believe he went to San Francisco. So the village life was fantastic. We learned a lot of, lots of uh, natural nature things like catching fish, catching flocks, catching water snake, uh, collecting a bird eggs from trees, climbing trees, fruits, and uh, this, we, 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 we were well provided. We were not have to worry about foods and, and whatever. Although there were changing of the uh, political landscape, la landscape at that time, but we, we weren't at any pressure at all. And I think because we were outside uh, a major city, and it's the five county called Wu Yi, it's well famous for going overseas and coming back to build the Chinese village, in particular, like Diao Lao. It's one of those famous. Uh, it's still about a thousands left in the present day as well. So, so, so we we weren't we weren't happy. We collect fruit. We 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 were play and we started school uh, about five years old and then in this um, Chinese uh, school. It's it's well well attended by all different villages coming to this little 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 townships uh, townships and then we all go to school i i remember that that was have a have a, have a really enjoyable time uh that there was there, there was no 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 bothering there was we were happy we were well provided so when did you come to the uk and why right the, these uh in in our villages when you were small you heard about all this story from your grandfather from your great uncles and and the things about about American, about the gold mining, the gold, the mountains as such. And and it, I, I think it's in our blood, and the Wu Yi people's blood. And then we always want to go overseas uh, to seek opportunity. And we came, we went, we, we went to Hong Kong in 1953, about 53, 54. And then from a very kind of a rural uh, backwater uh, Kaiping City, and then we first reached to Hong Kong. The objective is go to America. But then 1953 was Korean War. The war just finished in July. So when we were, came to Hong Kong, we, we have uh, no opportunity to go to America because there was uh, like embargoes, like there was uh, sanctions against uh, uh, Chinese going overseas. But having said that, I really enjoy my life in Hong Kong because 1953-55, and I, were, I was educated in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, there were three types of school, or four types of school. There was a nationalist school, there was a communist-run school, there was state school, there was English school. So I was lucky to go to Tuck Ming, Tuck Ming Xiu Hong. It's one of those nationalist-run schools, and I enjoyed it. If I wouldn't come to England, I'd be end up in Taipei or Toi Bak. Anyway, so that was that was as there were so Hong Kong itself then in 1953-55 is a sleepy port city, 
and it was about nearly half, over half a million population. And, and as you understand, it's a colony run by British. And I managed to go to the school uh, for about eight years to uh, year 10, I think, the, uh, sort of high school, second years. But I was lucky because I love Chinese literature. Because the Chinese literature, which is, I was lucky to be able to have that seven years education, which was brought up in many aspects or Chinese way or the Confucius um, ideologies, the family, respect, honest, uh, you know, gong, uh, uh, fairness, equities, and, and family uh, kind of a traditional way to do I, I was enjoying it. In particular, I was educated by Gam Yong and Leung uh, uh, Yusang and Gu Rong. All these are, Qin Jin Yong is it's, uh, it's famous storytellers and, and it's loved by all Chinese. I, and I, I usually, because um, in the 50s, the 60s, 70s, you got Gai Bin Lin Man Tower. It's a street corner shops book library. And, and it, it's fantastic. I, I read all my books there. I know so it's fantasy, but, but, but really in real life, there's lots of history about Chinese. And we, we had a flat there. My father, because we weren't able to go to America, my father sent money from America. We bought a flat there. We got four rooms to let. So again, we were lucky to have a comfortable house, uh, a flat on the fourth floor on Built Street and Garden, Garden Flower Street in Kowloon, Mong Kok. And then the, the other part of my life is growing up nicely, uh, well provided, uh, enjoying both culture, you know, the Western uh, um, uh, sort of a cinema life, the cartoons. And it, it, it is a open up a new perspective. The, Hong Kong at that time is a sleeping boat city. It's, it's no tourism. It, it just because there's lots of uh, plastic flower factory. There's a wake hair wake factory. There was textile factory. They, 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 they were building just beginning. There wasn't even um, kind of the only the only successful for Hong Kong it was at that time because of the I believe the American sanction against communist China South Korea. The only entry port from China is through Hong Kong. So Hong Kong benefit for the transit good in transit and. Then we, 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 we again, I mean, from my childhood there, from kind of a five to 12 years old, we're enjoying life beautifully. And, and, and we settled down uh, uh, very, very well. We enjoyed story like uh, we, we were clothing different from, from, from what we... It, it was a culture shock from Kaiping and to Hong Kong. It only the culture shock because we, 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 we blew on our hair like Elvis Presley. We like Chris Richard. We like, you know, West Side Story. We love <laughs> everything Western, Western. So, so there, but also I, I like Cantonese opera. Okay. So equally, I, I love Cantonese opera. So, so their life has been really fantastic. It's really good. But why didn't you choose to go to America than uh, England? They come back to the Korean War because we were... Uh, there, there were sanctions against uh, immigrant to America. And my uncle, my father's older brother, happens to be in Liverpool, right? So instead of go to America, and my uncle say, why don't you come here to study? That's why I come to Liverpool. When did you come here? I come to 1962, December the 20th. I remember it's... it's uh, it's a first journey going out from leaving home again by yourself. And we have the whole village from a second, second big uncle, which is my brother's half brother, which is from the first grandma's side. So it's an extended family. Mm -hmm. So they, he would come back from America. He sent me off with about 20 people, sent me from Kai Tak Airport. And I was bewormed. I was overwhelmed with, with joy. See the new world, but also with sadness. You know, you cry a little bit because you're leaving your mum and brother in Hong Kong, and that was that was quite tentative. Quite Can you tell me more about the early days that you came to Liverpool? Right, the, I, I think it was fantastic. I got five pounds in my pockets, and then we got what we call VC ten. We fly, we flew from Hong Kong. It's about twenty-two hours. We stopped by 
uh, Bombay, like India and, and so forth. I can't remember. I was too young to know because the first time you flew. We ended up in London. I changed the flight, managed, got addressed, and then right to Liverpool airport stand. The first impression that I have was uh, snow. Saw snow the first time. And then we went up to my uncle's chippy, which is White Field Road in Liverpool 6. And, and it is completely uh, out of character, out of um, uh, bewilderment. And, and I thought, this is where my uncle lived. Terrace house, outside toilets, no heating. <laughs> and little side street, copper stones, and then your little betting shop. There's lots of pops, corner pops. And I said, smog, foggy. And I said, well, what am I? What am I? You know, that, that was the first feeling. You come into Liverpool and I said, oh, it's absolutely then the luxury that I have in Hong Kong. And, and because we got a room, we've we, we got four rooms to let. We, we can buy things at the middle of the night, go down to have wonton soup. I love wonton soup. I love the congee, you know, from... Uh, uh, just, just you know, go downstairs. Then you have all the whatever you need, and which is quite a culture shock again. So, so from 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 then to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to here. So I feel that was. Um, I don't feel de depressed again. I don't feel uh, upset or anything. Okay, outside toilet, yes, chippy, yes. We're doing potatoes, yes, it's fine. But and then, what I were looking for, seeking for, is my own dreams. My own gold mountains, where it is, I'm finding, looking for it, from little stream, river, to China, oceans, and then come to England. So I'm still seeking my dreams. So I wasn't any uh, put off by these negative factors that I'm facing. That oh, what a dumb place. Okay, two questions. So what were what were your dreams? Can you talk about that, and then um, can you share with us the process then you chase all your dreams? I didn't know where the schools separation in the old day. There was grammar school, second and modern school. So where we're near to my uncle is a second and modern school called Prince Rupert Second and Modern School against a dumb place. But it doesn't that doesn't cause me problem because my dream is again in search of gold mountain. It's it's not for just for uh, richness but fulfillment. Where I'm gonna so I spent one and a half year in this uh, second in modern school, and my father said, um, what, why, what, "What do you want to study?" And I said, "Father, I didn't want to study. Uh, I'm not, I'm not um, dumb, but I'm, I'm, I'm quite uh, capable to to do." When I was in high school in in Hong Kong, I was top three, top, f you know. So I wasn't dumb. I want to think, but I said, "Why did you want to go to?" college my uncle said he said no i'm going to work i'm going to make a living i'm going to be independent i'm going to do my own way so so that that's how they started searching that dream the dream is what what shall i do what profession i'll be in um so the thing is i must get independent and financial world off and then i decide what i'm going to do so <clears throat> can you tell us about um how your work progress or your working life, start from that point. Yes. Um, so, 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 my father and my uncle were surprised. What, what do you want to do? What can you do? I said, I'm, I'm going to work as a chef, as a waiter, uh, whatever, whatever works on the way. Luckily, my, uh, my, my cousin, uh, uh, f boyfriend at that time, they married now, George, his older brother, Tony, has opened, just opened, a restaurant in Hull. Kale Singh Restaurant, Kale, Kale, K-A-O-S-I-N-G Restaurant in uh, James Street, it's uh, by the station. So he said, do you want to work here? I said, terrific, I work. How much? £3.50 per new week. <laughs> £3.50, that would do me fine. So, 16 and a half, I packed my bag, left uh, White Fuel Road. But in White Fuel Road, there was something I'm missing. Because I love Chinese literature, I love Chinese history, I love why were China from a kind of a, a field of society into a, a rural society where we came from, extended family with 
a few grandmothers. And then where we end up in Hong Kong and a nuclear family. And coming to Liverpool, uh, what we left off is from kind of a feudal society into a nuclear family society into into a, so I I was started looking for like Ga uh, Chun uh, you know uh, family uh, you might know Ga Chun Chao is Ga is a, a house uh, spring and autumn uh, by I think it's by Ba Gum Ba Gum and I read I read lots of those story and 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 the thing is try to not only just. Kung Fu story again now, you know, I'm just start reading. And and they, they were, while we were in Liverpool here, we were in the chip shops, but I got a central library, there's a load, a huge collection of Chinese, you know, like Sam Kok Yin Yi, the three warring kingdoms and, and, and all that. So you would, you know, water margin, water margin. I, I read all that stuff. And, and, and it's good for me. And I, I love it. So so I started, I would say, I want to work. And, and then we started work uh, in, in uh, Uncle Tony's restaurant. So, a couple of years later, I learned all the tray. I started type menu for them to able to do, we call lunching vouchers. In the old day, you get two and six, you have a lunching voucher. So, so, so you have to do the menu, you do the menu. So I said, if I do the menu, type in it, why don't I just remember and do it, so, you know, do it like, like type. Like. So I learned how to type by memory. So do menu. So I said, if I want to have financial security, I need to have a restaurant. So I said, I learned my chef up. So I'll be assistant manager from, from the waiter for a couple of years. And then I'll learn all the skill. And I said, yeah, I've been learning this skill, how to be a chef. So I learned, up there, I learned how to be a chef. I, I did actually work there, but I do an observation and, and things like that because you were there all the time. So, and I spent lots and lots of time doing college co co of commerce in Hull. We do part-time English for overseas Chinese. I think it was Oxford and Cambridge paper. There was lower certificate for English whose mother tongue is not English. So I did that. So I did the efficiency English for overseas Chinese, which is another papers. And I do a little bit of business study. Okay. So, so all my time there, it's over there. And then the other shock was I had to do lots of fighting every weekend. And I really have to fight. I mean, I'm a magistrate now. I don't fight anymore. I'm tall. I talk my way out of it. But, but in the old day, you had to fight. Because in Hull City, it's a fish dock. The fishermen go out sea once, come back in a month, two months' time. The first thing they would go to is get drunks, get some hookers, you know, get happy girls. And, and they get end up in the restaurants. And very often, they look for trouble. Uh, and you've got young gangs. They eat and then... They go out without pay. So what are you going to do? I said, please, sir, give me, you know, my money back. No, we go out, we chase them, and then we end up fighting. So, so we, 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 we had to fight for, for not for um, satisfaction, but fight for survival. You can say that because he, he, they, they come in. So, so they're life changing. So, so we're doing a lot of things. So I began to learn some skills as well to organize in Hull. There are only four restaurants, only one Chinese takeaway. That was 1966-67. So in, within those, I don't believe, I don't understand the, the younger life. They want to go chef, they want to go to rest, they, they, go, to, uh, they go to casino. There were casino 21 uh, in, in, in how there were a couple of casinos. So I began to organize a Chinese football competition among all these restaurant people in, in, in East Park. So, so that was beginning to understand my organization skill. I want to play, you know, sort of stop them going. I go to see these casinos, but, but I said, it's not worth it to, to whatever. So, so that, that, part of, that part of the life growing up in Hull and, and from kind of a, a 16, Till about 19, nearly 20, uh, for five years' time, is a consolidation of, uh, of progression, of making dream what I want to do. And I believe I spend a lot of time in a pub, yeah, to read all my papers, started with Daily Express, Daily Mail, The Sun, and graduate into Telegraph and into Times. Only now I read Financial Times and The Guardian. It's a difficult paper. But that is the five years in Hull was, was another educational uh, life, which is 
I, I, I started reading like Wolfling Heights, Jane Eyre's and Charles Dickens and looking at, you know, yeah, good stuff there, Victorian time. It's comparison with Chinese feudal identity. And where, how, how, how is that? We are, have 5,000 years history and then we were uh, nearly colonized by these Western um, nations and, and then we, we, we difficult. But what were they? How did they would do that? Industrial Revolution, 1755, 1755, in the Northwest. Actually, start from here, from Liverpool. That's where you're famous. The Liverpool Dock Canal to Manchester, the old traffic, the whole area were textile, the kingdom were textile, so you need slaves. So we'll come to that later. So after learned all those skills, managing, you know, um, ma mainly management skills, right? Um, what kind of jobs or business did you start? So I I feel because uh, my brother was here then, so that was I think he came nineteen sixty seven, and then later on my sister in law, uh, little nephew David came. He's three years old, and then come over, and then I have a small saving. And then I decided we should have business together to run business. So that was another journey. And then they're looking for business. And it was lucky. We look all around in, in, in Yorkshire, uh, Leeds, um, Morley, the hill by Morley, Leeds, uh, e everywhere, um, York and, and all Yorkshire side. But luckily, again, is Uncle Tony's sister, uh, wife, older sister, recommend a uh, fish and chips. It's not fish and chips, that's what we call supper bar. And then, and then I said to my mom, to my mother, I said, sell the flat in China, with that, pack up your laundry in America, come over here. And that was, that was kind of a family tradition again i want to establish that kind of a unity again so so the bloody agree agree so uh, actually i started the business 1969 and it was a successful business 1969 started 1970 and that was successful business because i learned some of the skill uh in a restaurant i learned some of the uh business study only little part of the study in 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 in, in kind of a management it wasn't that uh, enough to to do what you but but su sufficient just enough to do what you can do so the takeaway was very successful and and indeed i i have about four chef uh six staff outside including my brother my sister m myself uh with three chinese chefs so i actually uh the initially the first two years is do all the cooking as well as do all the buying and 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 then 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 luckily we were really successful, and then we beginning to to look for uh, fa, fa, um, residents and and beginning to to bring in my father and my mother. They all they came over here in 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 Liverpool in 1973. So we all instead of instead of like the old day and the the, the mothers in Hong Kong, the fathers in America, the uncles there. Now we all coming back to Liverpool. So as a unity and other families again. So how long did you uh, run this uh, takeaway? Um, Chinese takeaway, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, once we started successful in the business, and that's sort of kind of a you, you may say of a uh, reaching out the the goal, uh, not enough, not 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 goal as money, but your goal as what you want to go. The first part of your your, your destination, your destiny. So, oh yes, it, it's great. So I I begin to to branch out. So we have cafe in uh, a different city, Omskirt, and then we have um, restaurants in a different place in Formby, and then then that that's how it's beginning to to extend in the business. But eager at the same time, I began with my, uh, what we call, day relief, part-time study. I did my ONC, Ordinary National Certificate. And then, then I was caught in then. And then I have, 
<laughs> but I'm still doing the same thing. You know, you business, you courting, you you doing, you running the business. It was exciting time. It was a busy time. So from then, I got married in 1976, and then I had my own family. But our family still run the business together. So my father do one, my brother do one, I do one. But I always told to myself, in your kitchen is seven by seven, okay. Your bank account may be growing, but the destiny is not there. All right. So finished HNC in nineteen nineteen eighty two. The business continued to grow, and then finished my BA nineteen eighty five. The business continued to grow, and then at nineteen eighty, I started with my in law and some friends. With the Hondo Cash and Carry supermarket, but because I was busy with all my other business, so I was not involved full time with the Hondo Trading Company、uh, till 1985. So I took one years、uh, from 1985. I finished all that, so I thought、mm, I should change some of the things that what I do. And I said to my brother, I said, "There you are, restaurant. You manage all that. I'll be off." So I went to work in our company Hondo in 1985-86. So again, it's a family, very much, much family orientated business, and there's lots of different、uh, management style. Because when you're in business, you talk about all the things you say, straight, positive, you know, bureaucracy and whatever. You, 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 you can solve pro- but family problem, family business. You can't because you have to,、um, you have to sort of、uh, look at. You don't want to upset your mother-in-law. You upset your mother. You want make them difficult. So, so you you get away. So after one years in in Hondo, so I went up to to teach a lecture in economics at Scammersdale College in Lancashire. So that that was good four years of diversify into different. Aspirations, different things that I was doing. I was enjoying it. I would do lots of stocks and shares at bank because the there was a lot of movement in stocks and share. You buy, you know, you know what I mean. You you buy, you sell, you buy, you sell. So、uh, I enjoyed that part of the time. But again, you, you said okay,、um, that's where I am. Nineteen eighty nine. I took the scholarship. They call midterm career training, and then after four years, I said, where do I want to go from here? So I thought, okay, let's took that scholarship. So I went to Manchester, did my postgraduate economics, and I finished my MA economic at Manchester University, and I wrote my dissertation at that time, an evaluation assessment of China economic reforms since 1978 with special reference to Guangdong Province. 78 is crucial, important where Deng Xiaoping went to Shenzhen, but the four special economic zones from Xiamen, Shantou. Zhuhai,、uh, Shenzhen, later Hainan Island. It's a laboratory, so you can go back to that. So where I put you, where where I looking at is that's where I should go, China, right? So finished my MA, went to Hong Kong, went to Rochester Hong Kong University. I stay on Bofu Lam Do, one of the my my, my nephews there. I I live with them, and, and then I doing. Going into work for China for American company, so my dream is going back, going back east. But then, then again, that 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 was crucially important because you 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 had that Western experience, that kind of idea. Then you want to go back. Then you want to understand the whole process of that reform.、Um, but obviously, the reform process is it, graduate now after thirty five years. I mean, obviously, we're not. To talk about here on 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 the, the the topic here, but but the 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 thirty five years reform and jettison China into a second largest economy in the world, and it's huge trillion trillion reserve, and 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 it's it's now they look for a way to invest where, not America, UK, Liverpool, that's where they good because we have the Shanghai Tower. Uh, scheme coming. We have the international Chinese center in the world. This is the area that we. But going back to the history, I enjoy working in Shanghai. I lived in Shanghai for six months, and I travel extensively to China because that is going back to your 
your your dissertations and then look through where y you see the catchment area where the kind of a uh, eastern side of the uh, muni municipals from Nanjing from from Nanjing from Suzhou from Yangzhou and so forth to 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 Dalian. I travel extensively cover most of China you know that you are very active in China's community in Liverpool can you tell us how you get involved and you know maybe any interesting uh, unforgettable experience doing you know all those things okay um after a couple of years traveling across uh, China and so forth and still my family is here so I coming back to Liverpool in 1991 and then Liverpool has been transformed from what I was speaking to you previously in the 60s about the vibrance of Chinese sailors and the eating house the Wei Sang Tong which is Chinese herbal, herbal, herbal center in fact people come London people from Newcastle people from Edinburgh Glasgow come to Liverpool because that the sailors bring enough all these medication herbal medicine in Liverpool. and and because of this is a gateway to the new world for the Jewish community from Europe in the 17th century and for the Irish from Ireland during the potato famines so Chinese sailor come into here through Alfred Holt shipping company and later on called the Blue Funnels and the Chinese community beginning to 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 grow in this area which is based in Cleveland Square however because the Second World War when they were flattened by the German bombers they were moved from Cleveland Square up to Pitt Street Upper Pitt Street and Great George's Street and Nelson Street here we begin to have face a lot of political uh, depressions uh, soon after the dog strike in 1980s and the 1983 riots Michael Hassentines they came to Liverpool he created the Mercy Dock Development Corporations which is transforming Albert Dock into a tourist the World Heritage uh, Centre at the same time we have a London company called Charterhouse Estate they came to Liverpool they bought 30,000 business from here from Lady Anne Street, Lost Coast Street, Rensselaer Street down to Paradise Street across to Upper Parliament Street the whole area huge because our city council had been bankrupt there was no more money they just like give away okay I aware the, 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 the threat and opportunity for the Chinese communities then I started to kind of uh, raise this problem with the Chinese community and say let's have a Chinese associations and then we will have to take on this challenge but at the same time people were really reluctant to do it because they have some kind of uh, uh, clients clients like the big families who establish over Duke Street this side and Duke Street that side and this is the Wong's family, this is the Liu's family, this is Chong's family, this is the Lee's family and then the south bit of it, Duke Street, this is the Singapore's, Malaysian's family so there's no, no, no unity at that time we already had the oldest community the Chinese Freemasons, the Siyap Chinese Association, the Hoi Yin Association, the Tap Moon Association, the Chinese Gospel Church, the World of Chinese Association, the Vietnamese Chinese Association. Nevertheless, don't forget the Wasing Chinese community. Okay, so and the Pagodas, 1983, they've been established. So there was lots and lots of community. But I told them, I said, none of you are doing business. He said, I want to form this Liverpool Chinatown Business Association in order to support all the Chinese business in Merseyside in order to claim or at least to fight for the rights of the Chinese community we want against discriminations against Chinese racial attack for Chinese community we want to protect our local infrastructure we want to have a themed China street which is like the lanterns and the light we want to have the Chinese archway and we want and I said what else do you want I said we want a whole lot but in order to face that problem, the first thing is to get them agree. So what I did was I come over this side 
And I said, oh, you, 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 you be okay. So I got five names. I go over that side, you know, like, I go over to that side and say, you, you be on board. Yes, fine. So I begin to have a collection of about 15 companies, 15 restaurants on board. And then we had the first meeting at the dim sum in 1992. During that time, Charterhouse already went bust. And the half, 50% owner of Charterhouse, a Jewish person called Max Stone. Max Stone. He has a company for Frenson's company. They're based in number nine Gambia Terrace up the road here. And he is our, our not as opposite to Saviour. And he's our, our difficult person to deal with. Um, they, they, they begin to say, you, 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 you have to buy this whole block. You have to buy this whole street if you negotiate with them. So I found the association in 1993, November, we inaugurated. And then I thought, I will not be able to do all things all time, all together. So I thought, at that time, I would work still uh, with part-time Hondo and still have our business interest there. So once I set up the companies, LCBA, and then I would prepare to spend more time with the community. Okay, so we would negotiate with the city council in order for me to, to work full time. So we started create the bilingual Chinese business development officer. So attached to city council, the economic European units. There's a lot of people went through for interview. Luckily, I got the job. But I think because I got the history backgrounds, we had lots of professional accountant, dentists went for it. And their requirement is they work three days a week and they work four days for their dentistry or the accountancy, but obviously that's not a deal for the city council, and I wouldn't approve that anyway. So we were lucky. So I've been working full-time for the city council in 1994. One of my major, I call it, achievement is united all the association together as a core members, extend to our ordinary member, I have 100 across the city, and then network with everybody, the university, they have a lot of government for Merseyside, which is like Michael Hassan time. We've got regional offices. We've got local chamber of commerce industry. We've got all the other quangos, you know, quasi non-government organizations like uh, City Challenge. We've got City Task Force. You've got a huge umbrella of people that be able to do it. So my strategy was within those, we have network, our core members. And then we run our Chinese New Year. As one of the key, we have run it successfully from 1994. I think it was the year of the dock. We run it the year of the dock. We run it there. And then we extended that. We have a short-term and a medium-term, long-term strategy. In one way, we have to affiliate with all these organizations that we talk about. At the same time, we want to affiliate with all the Chinese, the Overseas Chinese Association, the Chinese uh, overseas bureaus and Chinese alliance and, and so forth. So we, we have association with them. And from running the New Year's, then we move on all the other business support, yeah, grant support, infrastructure improvement, and all the things I told you just before, this is what we want to do. We want to do that, we want to do that. We want to build the bridges. We want to have training with Shanghai. I wrote to Morris. I wrote to Mr. Tang Zhen. He was the British consulate in Shanghai in uh, 1994. I wrote to him that this is the oldest city, okay? This is the Albert Dock, and exactly like the Bonn, because they were built by British engineers. The Peace Hotel, the, the, the Shanghai Banking Corporations, and, and our, the free graces that we have, exactly the same. So, so all this short term, but the short term is must unite all these Chinese community together. And then we move forward. And, and that, that took about three years to be to, to able to build that. But at the same time, Chinese, we have to move on. We, 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 we recognize the association formation of Chinatown across the world have a different purpose, a different um, uh, um, idea about what is association. I believe in the older association, bear in mind what they were coming into a strange country, or as you go to Southeast Asia, 
all right you need to have grouping together to give mutual support to your villages to the people who come from your townships you have to provide that you have to give them guidance and then that's where the chinatown where the chinese community association started from as you can see the siap association the hoyin association that we're doing it now and the chinese um uh Tatmun association they they are they are the association which is i call the older association I wouldn't say they are inward looking, but they are not as ambitious like LCBA. We we said we need to integrate. We need to bring the younger people come to join us. Professional young people, they can play part. They can play active, articulate changes of the whole city. Not only just that, we need to go to more judiciary. So I started with a uh, justice of the peace in 1994 September to join. To to show that we were part of the city, we we judiciary. I we talk very closely with networking with the local councillor, the politicians, like you know, like our MP um, in Liverpool here. So this is we we need to do. Whereas compared with the older community, they are kind of a, like a social club. They were here on the Sunday when they were. Uh, yes, it's fine. It's great. But the modern purpose, it, it, it's kind of a lack behind them because uh, in terms of like uh, funding, in terms of like doing all the sort of a business support, education, training, apprenticeship and all the things, which is that's not our business. But I said, it's our business because we live here. OK, we're no longer like my grandfather. They were making the money in San Francisco and they're coming to build a deal out in Kaiping which is famous. A lot of movie stars now doing um, Lit Ji Dan Fei, so I check him over. Check him, it's a little place. And it's there, you, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so so that, 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 was, that was different. But if you move on from then, as you compare, the newer, newer association are coming on now, now in UK, or across in Europe, otherwise, there were so many. Every town in China, second tier town or the first tier city, they will have an association. And then you begin to why. What are their commitments? Why they were called such such association? In what purpose it serves to the community, to the local or to the Chinese community. So so we, we, we are moving on to the old hundred years association. We move on to the kind of a um the middle part of it, which is I call it um, uh, the middle part of the, the association transformations and then move on that very, very new association across UK. And then you begin to want, they are, my feeling is, it's my own opinion is, they are detached away from the community. They are detached away from the government services. Yeah. As you look back in pagodas, okay, they are different. They were funded by local government. Okay, to have service to the welfare services, the the, the surgery for police uh, solicitors, uh, housing association. You got the Pine Cup Chinese Association, and then you got MDCCA Chinese uh, Development uh, Association. They run the Kera uh, Elderly London Club and Silk Road News. So, so they they are partly strongly funded by local government, but these new association that sprained up now and I, I begin to say where where are we going? How will we be ending up with that? And at the same time, the future of the funding because of the hostility program which is administrated by the Conservative, yeah, subsequently hitting all local governments and in turn which is hitting a lot of funding. But I feel the older communities should survive because they have a, they already bought the property, they rent out part of the property, they have all the means from the members to support the the functions of the community. So they are right, but the our association begin to face that pressure, okay? Because a lot of funding has been denied from the present local government. So the newer newer associations. And I'm not quite sure where they have the funding from, or what the mission statements, or what the kind of a objective or to achieve in the future. So now you talk about um, 
the difficulty that you're facing. I mean, like um, um, LCBA, that kind of new association. I want to know, um, when you first established LCBA, mm. have you got, you know, any difficulties or what what was the most difficult thing that you faced at, at the very beginning? I think at the beginning is uh, when you started the inaugurations there, you have these and then you have to collect more members. The 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 mentality, the naivety, naive of an attitude of the member is I'm living outside Liverpool, what's that got to do with me? You know, why should I um, pay you twenty pounds a year for your member. What can you do for me? So, so, so I said to them, I said, really, the twenty pound is just very bare minimum for you to join a club. And I said, the the problem is when you have vandalism in your town, in your chippy, and then you ask for help, then shall we give you help or not give you help? If we don't, and then you say we're useless. But if you don't, it's unfair to us. Why don't you join us now? Okay, for your younger people, when you join, they'll be able to enjoy our computer, bilingual computer services, you know, but you can able to come to our seminars. We run a lot of seminars, like MVQ Chinese level catering courses, which will hopefully to build their, the trans uh, movement of not only just Chinese restaurant, but you can, if you've got a qualification, city and guild or MVQ level Chinese cook, cook, cooking, you can go anywhere. So you can look at all, all the other things for your children. And, and if you, and the second thing is, um, there was, no matter how sincere, how genuine you, you want to serve the community, but there's lots of people who say, it's only for your own political gains. It's only for your own wealth. And I said, I said to them, I said, I sacrifice my earning f as a director from my, our cash and carry. Yeah, my bonus is my wages to work for city councils for the last twenty years. But I said, do you know what my sacrifice is? You talking about sacrifices? And 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 I said, uh, I, I, if I stay away from from from, from the association community, I, I make more money. I said, really? I said, you 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 going to tell the truth? And the other type of person would be. Oh, we are professionals. We don't need guidance from you. We are professional. What do you know? You're second grade. You're like, you know, we are first division. You're second division. We know more than you. We don't need help from you. So you get all those. This is the kind of a, you get other two people who be said the difficulty for facing the community is grudges. They always have grudges against you. And no matter how well you do it, you're, you're no good. No matter how bad you, you're really bad. You know, th 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 this, this is the reality of, of community work. Uh, but the positive side of the thing is um, you, you, you sacrifice long hour running. Um, the, the thing is, but, but you still have some kind of a job satisfaction. Uh, you, you, you feel you, you've been achieved something. You, you like, we have the CCTV camera around Chinatown, the first one uh, here, um, I was rewarded, I don't know why, uh, as a deputy law lieutenant for the county of Merseyside. Law lieutenant is Henry VIII. As a sire, they have a law lieutenant. So you're a deputy. It's fantastic. The deputy now is able to do a recommendation for MBE and OBEs. And, and we no longer able to collect taxes to keep police force and keep an army that was uh, different than now than before. Uh, I, 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 was, um, I was taking a Hellwood International Drink Bureau to China and the call from, from, from one of the local office, hey, Mr. Wong, you'll be recommended for this. And I was I didn't really know what's that. So I was lucky to be uh, a war that was the first Chinese for deputy law in the year 2002. I was taking Lambrini, Red Square, to Shanghai and Guangzhou. We were, our associate were co commissioned by International, Hailwood International. It's 300 million turnover. If you go to Cash and Curry now, you see it. Lambrini, pear fermented drink, and it's very, shall very well. So, so that, that was, I, uh, there was positive and negative side. If you, uh, it, it kind of uh, you had to you had to be very patient. You had to talk to people. Um, the other thing which I think is rewarding is you, because you're, you're you're running the community, you're able to meet all these famous people like 
Tony Blair, like uh, like uh, David Cameron, like our president Jiang Zemin, uh, and Wu Jintu, and Wen Jiabo, and, and and so forth. And the last one I was invited to with all the um, leader in, in the UK. We were in Jia uh, Qinglin, Ga Hing Lam. Uh, we were in Beijing conference for three days, and then we were in Shanghai Expo. That was two thousand and ten. And then, but through all these connections, all these um, networkings, and 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 I I think that that would be uh, kind of a positive, uh, recognized or um, rewarding to be able to say yes, I have achieved something. Yes. We can take a delegation in. Yes, we will take delegation now. But because you're networking, you'll be able to do a lot of things beyond you can just do a chippy. Remember, we talk about four by four, seven by seven in the kitchen. You had to move on, you know, from stream, from river, from pond, from ocean to you know bigger, bigger oceans. And that's what you can achieve. It's it's, it's through. Uh, is it like? It's like climbing, rolling up the stream. You, you got to roll, continue rolling. You're not stopping. I'm doing a project now. It coordinate uh, what we call www dot yeah loyalgolfengland dot com, right? And I were doing all our short term break for all golfer from China to play in the northwest. Our most beautiful golf course in the northwest, the loyal. Uh, Bergdale, the Liverpool Loyal Golf Course, and St Anne uh, Golf Course. Now, this is about networking, but at the same time, and then we do a lot of. Uh, I'm attached to uh, ChurchHouse.com, is investment fund management, uh, based in uh, Mayfair, London. So, which is we can do tier one, tier four, emigrations uh, um, investment programs, and, and all the other thing. So, this is what we moved on. My association now is being run by Alan Sito. He was with me for about fourteen years, and his origin as a librarian, Liverpool City Council. Now he's an IT specialist in uh, Atu University. But he he is a he's a younger guy now. Now we come about the difficulty of my generations. Where we moved on, where we moved on quickly is we are here now. We've got new association which is not identified, detached from the Chinese community or Cantonese speaking community. They move away to do what they were doing. At the same time, we don't have successions. Alan, Mark, Hannison, Meng, Chris, and all the younger people now, they are bilingual speakers. And then you got you you've been found out it's the professional people are too busy to come to China to to, to be a, a community workers, or or they were just coming for a, a Sunday meals. Then you got the BBC British-born Chinese. They won't be able to speak bilingual, and then they feel quite strange to come to that kind of meeting. So so you 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 found this succession. In my 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 journey moved on. Alan journey moved on, and then we we'll say uh, where we were. Twenty forty. So that was long, long away. So we, 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 we might not know what, what would be the outcome there. But, but still, this is a difficulty that we're facing in the future. We don't know where we're going. We have fun uh, reduced for the last five years. Um, we, we have not have enough younger people to take over Ireland's and their task in the future. But then again, do we need a Liverpool Chinatown Business Association? We might not need them because, with all these rigid regulations preventing our Chinese uh, workers from 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 China, this is not the market that we have. And I would encourage our younger people to gear to work, how to do business with China. And I mentioned the ICT, the Shanghai Tower. China invests heavily in UK. All the banks, China banks, invest in London because of during the future RMB. Okay, but you look at Huawei; he has extended in success, employed seven hundred people. And you look at uh, Witterbix being bought by Chinese company. Volvo's gone to China. Uh, Rover's gone to China. You know, 
there was lots of <laughs> China invest 80 millions in Manchester Airport. They own so so I, I'm saying is, do we really need another Chinatown in, in in Liverpool? That's a question that we post to the future leader of the city. Okay, I want to know um, from your point of view, what kind of role that LCBA actually played in the um, Chinese community in Liverpool, and is it changes? I mean, changing over the years. I think prior before 1993, we got all the association, all their own things, which is admirably done by them, you know. Uh, and LCBA, we, which we have a program, and um, we call a rich pictures. Uh, so, if you if you look at these, what we did. Um, LCBA, yeah, and that's the big chamber of commerce industry, right? Where where we were achieving our missions, the goals, objective, we have nearly fulfilled some of our pledges, our promises, okay? And like I said before, we have, we try to, we attempt to raise the image of Chinatown. Um, but time has changed. They will have so many these buffet bars, and these are different than Chinese restaurant, because the Chinese restaurant in the older day, you, you build up a relationship with your clients, with your customers. You come in, you know their first name, you know their families, and that kind of a. Uh, Unity, that kind of a friendliness is there. You go to a buffet, you pay seven pounds, you eat, you off, you go. You don't know anybody. The time has changed. Uh, the time has changed much. This is one aspect of it. Okay. The other aspect of it is the older business now is phasing out. We've got the newer mainland Chinese uh, Mandarin speaker coming into the city. They establish four or five uh, small um, convenience stores. I like to say convenience stores, but they are beginning to establish there. Uh, so, what 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 we did was we 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 have able we we were able to to expand to diversify to to encourage the the delivery of the. Uh, the missions of LCBA. Um, it it is again. I come back to over times. The newer association have a different way to achieve their goals. I don't know what their goals were or are in the future, but the older um, associations like ours, we had achieved lots of three main themes. Regeneration, physical regeneration, and then we go for business commerce. Okay, then we do uh, community development, which I think, which is summed up to what we did for the last twenty years. We we do all that three things, three headlines. But under the headlines, there there would be uh, things like the archway, the theme that street signs. The Chinese character on the street. Uh, we support the business development. We do a lots of seminars, you know, financial stakeholders pensions. We do a lots of other things. The community development. We're looking for a Chinese heritage center, which is pressed by Mr. Wong, who owned the Scandinavian hotel. If that work came to be successful, that was really rewarding, because then we have the legacy to say. There you are. We've been the last twenty years. We have the heritage center, but that is not going to be uh, the case anyway. So, uh, but that's reality. But if you compare with the newer uh, associations, um, obviously um, they, they, they have a lot of difference, and I, I wouldn't be able to comment on them and how they will be running in the future because they are still very young. If you have um, uh, 
have so many. I mean, you, got, you can say about 40, 50 new associations in UK. So it's difficult to image, to emphasize or how they would behave, what they were doing in the future. But, but, I've, I, but, but obviously, I mean, the purpose of their being it, is to support the people from their own county. Uh, for example, Suzhou. So they have a Suzhou uh, Chinese uh, association. So everyone from Suzhou city will be joining the clubs. But whether the integration with the host community, uh, then I wouldn't know until we can see that's happening. Okay, may I ask the last question? Um, Liverpool has the oldest um, Chinese community, mm -hmm. and I believe, I believe you witnessed the changes over all those years because you came here in the um, 1960s. So can you summarize the main changes that you think about the Chinese community here? I think the main changes, the community, you, you talk about the community association or you talk about ordinary Chinese business as a whole. Yeah, as a whole. For, yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, I think the most important bit is People shifting away economically, they're much more mobile economically and socially mobility. And then you, you're going to see um, they don't res recite, they don't stay in Chinatown as much as the old day. So, so they are moving away for, for, from the centre itself. Um, the community side of it, as I said before, there were lots of uh, fund uh, reductions. So you can see a lot of major um, uh, community like the pagodas, like the MTCC8, like the World of Chinese Association, uh, and, and and the rest are beginning to trim or to cut drastically. So so that that's community side of it, and and that the older community may not be able to bear that blunt of that cuts uh, recently. Uh, the newer association. Uh, like ours, uh, with the younger people with really minimum fundings uh, because they all got their own professions, the younger generation, my, my, and the LCBA. So they are capable to, to kind of uh, weather the storms, I would say, for the near future. In terms of the business-wise, and you, you can see in Chinatown now, it's so much quiet. The consumption pattern has changed. I remember when I started the takeaways in the 1970s. You see, all the pops closed at 10, the last round. Okay? And all the supermarkets closed at half five. So you can imagine now the kind of the, 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 the pattern has changed so much. People can buy online, people can go to ASA 24 hours a day, right? And people do not have luncheon vouchers. People's uh, expenditure, like uh, a hospitality cart, have been reduced, or, or the packet has reduced. So you, you, you see people are beginning to feel that kind of a pinch, to feel the difficulties from, from their spending. Instead of go to Chinatown once a week or twice a week, now it's once a month. So if you look across here, it's only you know, about six or seven uh, still successful, still maintaining the clientship, maintaining the stability in Chinatown here. And lots of them being phased out. Because they own the property, they can open whenever they like, but it doesn't create the kind of a, the commotion, the, the activities in Chinatown here, make it, make it quite kind of a, a, a difference. So, so the only thing that will fill that vacuum is I believe is the Chinese students that they study in all our universities. They study in Liverpool University, John Moore University, the Hope University, the community colleges. So they're all across the city. So so they, they these are the new new uh, spending in the Chinese restaurants, in the Chinese buffet bars. Okay, but I did not have I have not seen any heavy major Chinese investment from China. As I uh, as I do some research and, and look at it, uh, it's still young. It's still got opportunity for Chinese investor if they want to come.
Okay. Um, uh, have you got anything you want to add or say something? Um, no, thank you. But I, I, um, I think this um, program is it's very useful. Uh, but I, I, obviously, because based on the financial capability, you, you have to tailor make to to do so many interviews, so many. Yeah. But I, 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 I feel maybe useful. At the end of the day, post two thousand fifteen or two thousand sixteen, you would have a conference. Uh, or seminars, conference to to make these groups of people to come together to share their experience. And I have written a book it's called "In Search of Gold Mountains." It's translating by people in Tsinghua University. Uh, the idea is my journey. Uh, it it. I'm not sort of qualifying myself or, or whatever. I think it's aspiration to my grandchildren. They would say, they would say, oh yeah, where's my granddad come from? And then they would read them. I might sell them to five pounds a piece. <laughs> it's still big in my copyrights there. <laughs> I think that'd be good uh, if you're able to do that. And that would be great. Thank you very much. Brian. You're welcome. Thank you.